Regrettably, people across the globe and throughout history have been faking and forging products and artifacts deemed valuable. The most obvious reason for these occurrences seem to be the benefits received from fabrication. Fake artifacts have been observed in nearly all civilizations, but for the Afro-descendant community, fake African artifacts can be seen to hold a little more weight considering the already patent adulteration of African history. So today, I wanted to shed some light on this little discussed aspect of history. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. And with the word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. OBT Social is black owned and operated, and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can visit the website at obtsocial.com. Links to everything in the description box below. To begin, this video is intended to give us an idea concerning the scale of fake Egyptian artifacts, and to provide a brief history of it. There are many confirmed and suspected Egyptian fakes, but today, we're only going to be highlighting some that are confirmed and one very popular artifact that is suspected. Let's begin with a quote that I feel encapsulates our topic. Fakes and forgeries have existed since humans began to create art and written language. Laws against forgery existed in ancient Egypt, where craftsmen were skilled in making glass imitations of precious gemstones. In that same area of the ancient world, Phoenicians sold counterfeit Egyptian relics. Later, the Romans became adept at fabricating copies of Greek art, which was fashionable in the upper circles of Roman society. So as we can see, fakes and counterfeits have an ancient history. As long as products of value have existed, tawdry imitations of said value have as well. Moreover, as alluded to earlier, this is yet another gloomy reminder of how stained some African history has become. Despite this, there is still reason to believe in genuine scholarship and discovery. The truth has a strange way of coming out on top. That being said, a question arises, when did fake Egyptian artifacts become more popular? The faking of Egyptian antiquities goes back to the first decades of the last century when European museums and private collectors began to acquire specimens of ancient art. Most such pieces, however, were so clumsily fashioned and so devoid of style that they were readily recognized as forgeries. This clumsy style wouldn't last, however. The fakes and forgeries became much better and more complex, even to the point that they were displayed in museums and at large events. George Steindorf, writing in the 1940s, made the claim that large sums of forged Egyptian antiquities are bought in Africa every year and cherished by their owners. A German Egyptologist named Ludwig Borchard was able to track down some forgers in Egypt. One of them was an Italian marble worker who allegedly showed him his technique for creating the fakes. Equipped with this information, Borchard recognized forgeries by this Italian artist in various European museums. One of the most popular confirmed fake Egyptian statues was of Queen Tetesheri. She was a member of the royal Egyptian family of the 17th dynasty. Her fake statuette, now believed by some to have been created in Egypt around 1890, was so well made that it was featured as a sort of case study for Egyptian sculpture in general. This attractive limestone statuette inscribed with the name of Queen Tetsesheri was long regarded as a key piece for the study of Egyptian sculpture of the late 17th to early 18th dynasties. Over the years, it has played a major role in establishing the accepted view of artistic development in this period and it has served as a basis of numerous critical assessments of other pieces. However, upon further analysis, 
The inscriptions on the statuette had errors and was inconsistent with ancient Egyptian writing conventions. Also, a number of other inconsistencies arose. When all these factors are taken into account, it becomes difficult to avoid the conclusion that the renowned statuette of Tetsusheri is the work of a modern forger made at Luxor probably shortly before 1890. Of lesser interest, another confirmed fake Egyptian artifact are these two wooden statuettes acquired by the British Museum in 1922, these being developed in conjunction with an ambiguous purpose just highlights the scale and operation of the forgers. Interest in lesser scenes or people were apparently still deemed profitable. Given this information, this video would be of little value if it didn't point out some of the skepticism regarding the authenticity of one of the most popular images of Egypt, the Nefertiti bust. This bust can in some sense be described as not only the face of Egypt, but the classic face of beauty in general. There exist countless references to it in popular culture, but most people are not aware of any claims that it may be a modern forgery. According to a Swiss art historian, the bust is less than 100 years old. Henry Steyerlin has said, the stunning work that will later this year be the showpiece of the city's reborn Nuez Museum was created by an artist commissioned by Ludwig Borchard the German archaeologist credited with digging Nefertiti out of the sands. Styrlin has claimed that the bust was created to test ancient pigments, but after it was admired by a Prussian prince, Johann George, who was beguiled by Nefertiti's beauty, Borchard said Styrlin didn't have the nerve to make his guest look stupid and pretended it was genuine. Berlin author and historian Adragen Ursevin has added his weight to the role with his book, Missing Link in Archaeology, published last week, in which he has also called Nefertiti a fake, modeled by an artist on Borchard's statuesque wife. Despite the innuendos and the muffled taint on its authenticity, the popular bust of Nefertiti largely remains clear of judgment in the consciousness of the public and many scholars. The consensus for now doesn't seem to present a satisfactory conclusion for a genuine mind seeking truth. However, given the history of the Western world's monomania surrounding ancient Egyptian artifacts, one shouldn't be surprised if new information arises. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in this continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey.